Hi everybody, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. So today you are going to see me being very brave and exploring for the first time acrylic fluid art. Now this is acrylic fluid art dip I'm trying. Now this is not a medium I normally work with with fluid art. Fluid art is being uh, my resin journey with a mash of acrylic but acrylic painting. So I, um, um, I work with oil paintings, acrylic paintings, um, charcoal, pencil, um, and now resin, but I'm just starting to dip my toes into acrylic fluid art. And that was an inspiration from Miriam, from Miriam's Nature, Miriam with a Y. You finally made me want to give it a go. So the video I'm going to share with you, I apologize to the professionals, <laughs> but I want to show my journey, warts and all, to give you people that have probably may never have tried it or never tried doing resin, to give it a go and to know that to start with you're not going to deliver anything amazing you're not going to rock anybody's world but what you are going to be do is brave and start that learning journey and to really understand a medium you have to be willing to explore and you have to be willing to fail and like Miriam's been saying and it's a big mantra of mine it's first world problems <laughs> if you're going to create a piece of work and it's not going to work what's the worst that can happen you waste a little bit of paint and you redo it all. But that's gonna move you forward uh, to delivering some amazing pieces of work. So along this journey or this video, I've captured the full process. So I've captured how I mixed my acrylic paints, even if it's unsuccessful, <laughs> the colors I've chosen, how I attempted my dip. And then once they dried, what did they dry like? Because that's one thing I have noticed. There is a huge difference between how you leave your acrylic piece of fluid art to your resin. Normally when you leave your resin, there isn't a lot of movement because it's already setting up and it is as it is. So I probably needed to have taken a little bit more time to make sure that where I'm putting it is level. <laughs> Put the same care into it, Sharon, that you would do to your resin. And other than that, uh, be prepared that it dries a lot flatter or um, matter the colour so it's not going to have that shininess but that's the beauty of acrylic and uh, you can embellish that and you can add resin which is what I do so you'll see me dip <laughs> I can't think of anything witty to say I went mind blank then you're going to see me mix dip review embellish resin and final product so there's really six processes to this like I said warts and all uh, there were some parts that stressed me there was some part that I was amazed at I am really intrigued by the beauty of the colors and by the dipping how it blends and gets these colors or creations or lines that you probably wouldn't be able to do by hand so did I learn yes did I enjoy absolutely it took me back to my childhood days at school where I was totally engrossed uh, was I outside my comfort zone? Yes. Uh, are there proud parts of this that you're proud with? Yes. Are there parts that are fails? Absolutely. I failed a lot along the way, but what a journey. And you know what? I battled through and I'm really proud of the end results. I mean, I'm proud as far as I would display them on my wall because that's a really important thing when you're learning a new medium. You need to have your art somewhere where you can see it regularly and then add your new pieces of art. So then you can see how you have grown and uh, uh, where this journey is taking you. So I will absolutely keep these. I mean, I don't think I'd sell them or people might not want to buy them because they are my piece of art that I've bonded with on that journey. So I've got a special connection. But is it interested me? Absolutely. I've already started a, a new dip. <laughs> so watch out for this video coming soon. So I am going to slowly take baby steps and learn the different things I can do with um, fluid art acrylic. And I'll share that journey with you. Uh, but I will be mixing it up with my normal resin, which is my passion. And also uh, some alcohol inks. And basically you're going to get a whole smorgasbord of vivid colours from myself and my art journey. Some people will take bits that they like and some people won't watch certain parts and that's okay but I'm not exclusive and I am going to share my journey and what's current in my 
art experience with you all but I would love to hear your thoughts and I, <laughs> to help encourage me I'd love for you to share me a photo uh, on my Facebook page of your first ever acrylic uh, fluid art or dip to help build my confidence with my journey and sharing it so I feel very vulnerable exposing this to you because normally I wait until I get it to a certain level of understanding before I share uh, because I feel very vulnerable when I'm learning a new medium and this is what I'm feeling now but hopefully you enjoy it and hopefully I encourage you to give it a go if not already and hopefully I'll encourage you to share your wisdom with me so hope you enjoy thank you so much for your support and yesterday I hit 10,000 subscribers yay! Thank you so much for all your support. Super excited. There is going to be a giveaway coming shortly. I've had to postpone the video on that one, uh, but watch the one uh, coming soon. Can't really say too much without giving it away. Uh, I'm going to be collaborating with two other amazing women. And the piece is completed. The video is ready, but we've just had to delay it a little while. And uh, But watch this space. The end result of this will be the giveaway to celebrate the 10,000 subscribers. And for all your love and care and support, uh, words cannot express what that means to me. So I'm Sharon. I've digressed. Get used to it, people. <laughs> I'll see you on the next video. Hi, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. The colours I'm going to be using is Blue Grass, Ultra Deep Blue, Ice Blue Metallics, Ocean Blue, Royal Fuchsia, and Purple Pizzazz. And they are all decor art and they are an amazing colour to work with. I'm also using the Pouring Medium and the golden titanium white throughout this i will do my best to talk about the processes but also try to leave you with a balance of a relaxation as i mentioned before this is the first time really delving into acrylic fluid art so i am showing you everything warts and all currently i am attempting to mix up my acrylics so this was quite an interesting experience so you can research as much as you want and you can watch as many videos as you want but it isn't until you start working with it yourself and start feeling it and working with it will you start to understand what is the right consistency and what i found is trial and error <laughs> but also what does it feel like and as somebody did mention on one of their videos different colors require different bits of pouring medium now i never used any water in mine in future videos I will experiment with that but this is pure paint and uh, pouring medium I bring you in later so you can see these beautiful colors and uh, I was was successful as far as the paints did what they were meant to be doing but I'm going to obviously keep improving and um, yeah other than that I'll leave you to it a little bit and then I will come back and talk you through I hope you're having a beautiful day one thing I did forget to mention is I am going for one part paint, two part pouring medium. But as I say, that's just a rule of thumb. It did vary depending on the actual uh, color I was using. And also all the products I will be using will be listed in my description just under the link. So please make sure you do tap that. Uh, you will find all the information there. Um, but if you do have any remaining questions, feel free to ask. Thank you.
hope you're feeling a little bit more relaxed so the shout out i want to give is for miriam from miriam's nature so that's miriam with a y check out her channel if you haven't already she's um what has she done ignited my passion to give this a go so i'm gonna pop my cork for you miriam uh with my acrylic fluid art so please don't stress about the amount of acrylic that's on here remember i'm just learning and giving it a go and i really wanted to have a go with the dips and i was feeling fairly confident but learning as i go so i wanted to make sure i applied it down onto greaseproof paper that way i can continue to keep using it and i originally only wanted to do the one but i'd got enough to continue doing more <laughs> so we ended up doing six pieces and learning as i went so um i'll do my best to talk you through i just wanted to work with colors work with feeling i'd got no idea what this is going to be i wasn't trying to get a purposeful image i wasn't trying to create a flower or anything like that i just wanted to see what these colors would look like when you dip them i mean most of us the last time you dip was at school right <laughs> so i'm checking that i've got a lot there and I notice as I'm pulling this up, I give a slight twist and that does distort it. And I'm just lightly pressing on here with a silicone brush that I've got. And I'm mindful that it is coming out of the edges. So I know I have applied too much. And what surprises me is how much it changes. So when you first pull it out like this, you can see a lot of white. But as it dries or evolves or time goes past you see more of that color popping forward and to me that's quite interesting because with resin when you apply it there's not a huge amount of change unless you've done something drastic whereas this is quite interesting because it continues to change over a period of time now on each one of my dips i wanted to show you the board area that i dipped into because oh my god it produces such yummy colors and and uh, techniques now if i could have just managed to scoop some of that up and used it in my artwork oh i would have been one happy camper but i'm onto acrylic dip too and one thing i have noticed by doing it the way i'm doing yes i'm learning but there is a lot of paint down there and a lot of i want to say wastage but um, it's getting out of control Sharon. rail it in <laughs> so don't we when i do revisit my second attempt at dip uh, my process has improved but this one i did pull off straighter uh, but the suction that it gets is quite interesting you, you don't realize how much it is and then even then when i'm tilting it slightly you can see the movement that's occurring there i'm just in a bit of a dilemma where do i start to put things because i want to keep my eye on them I'm mindful to see if they need torching. I don't don't really know how much torching they need compared to resin. Some of the colours in here absolutely yummy. No particular pattern, but to me it's just the merging of colours. You could never get this. Oh wait, let's stop and appreciate that colour there. So that was just the board that was left and that pink and that blue was just lovely uh something that i need to improve on for the next process is making sure that my sides are done and i'm moving into the third acrylic dip here it's quite quick this i'm struggling to keep up with the commentary now these cute little boards come with their stands and i would encourage you to have a go at those because the end result looks pretty special on those what i've noticed is there's a little um, gathering of the paper in the middle so i didn't want to put my canvas directly onto that because i was mindful that it could leave this weird crease so i started to add more color to the end and i wish now i just use my common sense and just flattened it and try to capture some of that color that was there but as i say and i'll continue to say learning journey learning as i go um what i found as well is i got i just got so into this i originally was going to do one and i thought i'm going to keep going while i've got boards or the paint i don't want to waste um, any more than i have to so just going to go in here and and keep playing and i was so relaxed by the end of this uh, it was so much fun and no fumes compared to resin which was brilliant this one i actually quite liked it about halfway and now i wish i'd stopped there or took a screen grab and <laughs> had the exact same image but then carried on doing what i was going to be doing i hope that made sense but i really like the dramaticness of the white and the against the blue and this one turned out to be one of my favorite ones because of the 
boldness of the colors and it was quite dramatic and you can't really pick it up on the camera but the blending of those colors sorry my hair's just getting in the way there focusing on that but it does come back uh, but working on my sides and um, you'll notice the other two pieces have gone and I've put them into my curing tent but I didn't leave the I didn't put as much attention to them as I would have done resin making sure they were level so um, these three particular pieces dried and cured okay pretty much as you're seeing them a little bit more uh, white disappeared and color came through just look at that yummy colors isn't there just some splendid effects there sorry I'm Sharon I'm digressing <laughs> And uh, what I wanted to do here is just mix a little bit more white in there. I don't want the colours to get uh, too dark. And I'm so sorry, this is where it starts to go off camera just a little bit where I place them. Uh, my mesh of uh, colour is <laughs> spreading. <laughs> I was getting a little bit out of control. Uh, but Miriam, you'll be very proud of me. I double dipped, I tripled it. I think I even quadruple dipped because <laughs> at this stage I'd just got some coasters to one side. I thought, what the hell, let's keep giving it a go and see what happens and uh, till I'm happy. So I start to get where I think, okay, the colours are bleeding together a bit too much now. I'm not getting so much defined. I'll put them to one side and I'll add some colour directly onto them. So sorry you don't get to see it, but I'm just a tiny, a tiny, applying tiny little bits of those colours. Uh, throughout with the vision that I'm going to put the other coaster directly on top of it and hopefully that will pop out and give you some uh, effects and it does and I'm just scraping around the cups now to get every last piece out onto that colour but there is a lot of uh, colour on there I do scrape some of it up and I do manage to use most of the paint that you can see down there but how, how gorgeous are some of those colours that get left behind absolutely fantastic Anyway, I am just, uh, what am I just doing? I'm just applying a little bit more of my colour to that coaster. Only little drips because I know there was a lot of paint on there. Uh, pleased to say I didn't get any cracking in this. So these decor art colours are beautiful to work with. I've never worked with a pour pouring medium before so I can't really tell you if that's the best one out there. But I did notice that as they dried I did get left with this beautiful uh, satin finish over the acrylics. Uh, but that wasn't enough for me so I wanted to embellish with resin anyway I am just squashing my coasters together and you'll start to see me pull those apart shortly I've got to get the suction under control so that I have the least impact that one is more or less done now but I just need to add some white to the edge where uh, it had not fully gone where it needed to be on the one that I used as the top one to push together but again some really beautiful effects and blending of colours both my coasters I absolutely loved when they were completed but they did dry dramatically different and uh, whilst it's not a fail they were the ones that probably disappointed me the most when they dried there's some abstract art for you just right there eh? <laughs> uh, and I believe I am onto my final set of coasters and then there's just one more little piece to come where I scrape up the rest of this. But I'm going to be quiet for a little while now and let you relax to some more music because you've heard enough of me dying.
So with this piece here, I tried to scoop up some of that paint that was on my paper. And the concept of it was really good, actually. I might go back and revisit it. And now looking back at it, I wish I'd maybe flipped it just directly onto it. And I've just applied some leftover paint into a cup to attempt like a dirty, dirty cup. But um, I wished in a way I'd just stuck to the first principle. However, I committed to this and I worked with it and I ended up getting some quite nice effects with blowing through the straw. I was a bit worried it, with this one how much paint was on there and how much can you leave on there before it starts cracking because I'm so new to this particular form of medium. But um, this is the piece that dramatically changed when it was drying and I believe it must have been very uneven. But I'm gonna leave you to watch me explore and play and having some fun with that straw. Hi, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. It's the day after I worked on these last night and I wanted to bring you in and show you everything warts and all. This is my first time dabbling in acrylic fluid art and I am trying to understand it. So I'm gonna bring you back in. These definitely have changed shape over the night and what I've noticed is the color dulls down. So I'm curious to know when I apply resin, does that bring it back? or is this what you're gonna get? So just trying to understand it. Most of it has uh, dried. This, this thicker one still has a little bit of drying, but I'm not seeing any cracking. I am still seeing some bright colors in there, but there has been a definite shift in the image. And I'm wondering if that's when I've transported them. I didn't put the same love and care as I would do resin, because I know that has to be perfectly level. Uh, so I think this is probably user error on my part, but I'm gonna bring it in and show you. Um, because I want you to understand as I learn with acrylic fluid art. So let's bring you in. So here we are. So I'm going to take you in to, uh, this is the first one I created. So you can definitely see there is some vibrant colors in there. There has been more color that's come through. I've lost a lot of my white and I've got webbing going on all through, but I'm curious to know when I apply my resin, what is gonna to happen to this color? Is it gonna pop more? So I am going to give them a coat of resin for the purpose of this experiment and learning myself. Um, this was the second one. See that skull is still there looking at me, that alien. <laughs> I can definitely see that um, it's a little bit light here when I have put the acrylic white on. And I can see where this is trying to do something interesting, which is bleeding in. And a lot of the white has disappeared again. So I'm wondering if the white is too heavy or if it's just use error again on my part. But I'm curious to know what's gonna happen when I apply resin. Is it gonna bring a little bit of lightness back to it? I don't know, but let's see. So the coasters that I did. So you got two sets, so they're in there. 
but let's bring it in. So this one was a little bit more bland, but I quite actually like it. And I'm curious again, when I put the resin on, if this is gonna add more depth. And what's gonna happen with this color? Is it gonna pop back or is that as good as it's gonna get? I also notice a little bit messy underneath. I will come back and tidy that up, but that's something else I need to take into consideration. Same with this one. These two were my favorite ones last night, but I'm not too sure about the way they've dried. Still a little bit to go. I've obviously got to touch them up and come in with resin. This one was the second to last one that I did. I quite like the rainbow effect that was coming in the sky. Now I do appear to have lost that a little bit and not too sure what's happening here. <laughs> and the green was coming into it. So I quite like the dramaticness of this one. Uh, but it, <coughs> I do apologize, it has lost that. So I'm curious to know again, what will happen when I resin it. So this was the final one and this one has dramatically changed. So this one must've been on an uneven surface and I had all these kind of swirls all the way throughout it, but that has run off. So, so it's definitely not like I wanted it. But I'm curious to know what I can do to rescue that. So watch this space. You are going to see me come back and work out if I'm going to keep the images as they are, or am I going to do a bit of Sharon editing, or am I just going to add the resin just to see what happens to it for the purpose of this experiment. Anyway, come with me on this journey. I hope you're having an amazing day. And let's get on to the next process. So you're now going to see me adding some embellishments and defined paintwork to all of the pieces together. So I'm using the Crafts for All Titanium Weight Permanent Blue Violet Fluorescent Peach Red Ultramarine Pathelio Blue Emerald Green. And you'll also be seeing me use the Peebo Geode Gold Leaf Silver Leaf Gold Flakes, which are more copper and the mixation which is what holds it down so I'm going to leave you to just watch this process I'm not going to talk through too much I've not showed you the full process because I'm mindful of how long this video is going to be to start with but I have showed you the bits of work that go on at each piece so if you do have any questions left and you want to know more feel free to ask but other than that just let your imagination roll free relax listen to some music and hopefully enjoy my process and hopefully by me embellishing these it's not going to be too stressful for people that like the organic natural look to acrylic pores anyway i will see you when it's time to resin and yeah relax enjoy and i will speak soon
you should be feeling so relaxed i know i am i am now preparing my acrylic pieces for resin so if you've never worked with resin before it's really important that you do put some tape on the back it makes it so much easier you're working smarter not harder for getting rid of those resin nipples at the end so i've left this part in just so people who do acrylics or who have never done acrylics before or resin and you are interested in my process this is an important step otherwise it's going to take a lot of sandpaper in and a lot of elbow grease just to get rid of those uh, resin nipples so you'll see me doing this process to them all and you'll see me applying resin so the resin i apply for this one is the last of my art resin um epoxy resin and uh, there's not much long to go now i apply that make sure there's no bubbles make sure there's no dust particles making sure it's all level and the backs have been prepared and then it's just the curing process of that 24 hours and come back and review but just to go back to the embellishments um i struggled a little bit with some of those embellishments at the time i fought a little bit against the uh, gold leaf and the copper leaf and wasn't too sure if i was devaluing the pieces of art and you'll see that i i came back over a couple of days because i wanted to just digest it before just giving up and i'm glad i did wait it because once i come back with fresh eyes and i was able to push that gold leaf down or or um see where it was going to look like when it was finished with the resin for me personally i did enjoy that process but I think you just feel very vulnerable when you're trying anything new and sometimes that creative experience can be a little bit stressful and that's when you've just got to walk away breathe use fresh eyes look at it from a different perspective over a few days and then you'll know whether you like it or not but i was committed and i'm so glad i stuck with it because personally for me i'm very proud of the end results but uh, enjoy a bit more music and i'll talk to you on review but thank you so much for spending some time with me and thank you so much for helping me get across that 10,000 subscribers you do not know how much that means to me uh, remember to keep paying back to myself by watching as much as this video as you can uh, comments are always welcome i love to interact with you all and have that community but i know that time is precious for everybody so i'll take where i can get and if you're interested in me testing any of your products whether that be resin pigments uh, acrylics or if you want me to create a piece of work for you make sure you make contact with myself and let's start those conversations but anyway i will go until the next video but have the most amazing day and remember thumbs up subscribe share
hi welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days on this beautiful semi-warm but beautifully sunny day that's coming in through my conservatory and flooding it with colour so I am going to say these pieces are done there is nothing more I can do with them and I have truly enjoyed playing with them and experimenting are they perfect no <laughs> could I improve this process absolutely but did I engage in this and really enjoyed learning about this medium and the potential now i love these individually for their own reasons so i'm going to bring in i'm going to start with this one here so this one came on a little canvas board i've still got to pull the tape off the back uh, but this comes with its own little easel it is so cute i love um the vibrancy of this color and to me it looks like it's a storm um either in space or just something in the sky that's full of colours and you can definitely see some of those um, multi-colours coming through from the acrylic but this is where I added directly the decor art myself. The reason I did that when as I'm experimenting um, I'm learning how to work best with a medium. Uh, it's not everybody's cup of tea but I love this piece. I didn't want to really remove this as this is going to be stood proudly on one of my windows and I think it's good to put your art around you especially when you're starting because it gives you that inspiration to keep improving and uh, you have a special connection with your first one so I'm coming to the left now so on the left this was the one that had the most movement so the one that had changed drastically I must have either had too much paint on there or when I put them to uh, set I've not made sure it was as level and paid as much attention to it as I would have done but there are some beautiful depths in this so this is the one where I came and added just my little bit of white now for some people they may not have wanted to do that for me I just wanted to do that and um, I was thinking of uh, ice caps or uh, the waves uh, from high above in the sky and I just love this texture and for some reason even though it's not dots in there does remind me a little bit of um, some is influenced should I say by Aboriginal art and um, it for some reason it just makes that connection to me uh, to Australia so it's another cute piece the resin has added value to both of these two and I think they're actually really cute when they're on the middle pedestal little pedestal so keep your eye out for those those are from a craft shop and it cost me I think it was uh, £2.99 uh, so that makes a great gift idea. Now, I got very brave with these two. And what do I mean by brave? Well, the gold leaf embellishments or the copper embellishments might not be for everybody. And I know that people with acrylic fluid art would probably have liked white negative space to contrast the colours and also to keep it true as it were. But for me, these cured really differently and a lot of the white disappeared so i lost my uneven edges but there was stuff in here that i found beautiful now i started to panic when i applied the gold leaf one because the glue was sticking to me and uh, i thought i was ruining the pieces and i was sighing and holding my breath but uh, when i came back with fresh eyes which i always recommend you doing they're not bad and i'm you know they're for me so i'm quite happy now what do i love about this piece so the reason i added the gold leaf around here is i knew it needed some kind of border and to me to make it look like it was going through a cave because i can see a big white owl bird or spirit whatever name you want flying into this cave now at the top here i can see a witch's head or a person screaming <laughs> or shouting and then i can see a skull and so to me i can see all kinds of spirits now i'm not saying these are, are negative spirits or anything but it is like a golden goblet cave and i could stare at this piece for a long time there's so much interest in there and I can see so much potential for how I work with these colours or what I can improve on, but I just didn't want to lose this piece. So to me, I actually think the copper leaf and then putting the resin on has brought it all together. And like I say, I could just stare at this piece. Um, there's so much interest. Now you can see like a little ears and eyes and mouth and 
yeah just something bubbling away so i get lost looking at that piece so not for everybody but i love it so over to the right this is the one where i thought oh <laughs> so i tried the gold leaf underneath and it wouldn't stick and it didn't look right so then i came back with a copper and I had a fight and left it overnight and it's actually added i think value to it um would it have looked better with white edges most possibly <laughs> but uh, that's not what this meant, piece was meant to be but I wanted to keep these because these were some of my first ones and uh, it's to remind me to keep improving but also to see the colour in there and uh, to continue using your imagination so I then came and did some coasters I've got a set of two there and a set of two here so I just wanted to see what would happen when I applied my resin would it bring out the depth I don't depth 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 and I only added a tiny little bit of colour, the pink that had washed out, but I used silver leaf here and on this one. So I quite like these, the depth, the simplicity. Um, no rhyme or reason to um, my uh, silver leaf, but just wanted to see what that would add. And the same with my gold leaf. Now these ones I actually really enjoyed when I first created them, but they're, in the curing process there was a dramatic difference. So. Oh, I didn't want to get rid of them. Like I said, part of this project was doing the full process and it was seeing what happens when I go through the whole process and add resin. And I wanted to share that with you all. For people that's never been brave enough to try, remember this is my first ever go at acrylic fluid art, especially dip as well. Um, and then I've had to use my imagination to see embellishment because that's one thing I've noticed on a lot of people's videos. You see this beautiful fresh artwork but in a lot of people you don't get to see well what do they dry like um and what can you do with it after that and then if you add the resin what's that process so i'm going to make sure that i continue to explore with acrylic uh, fluid art and different methods i will stick true to my resin because i absolutely love my resin art and i will incorporate my alcohol ink art and whatever other medium I feel because as an artist I want to keep growing and sharing and I just love colour and I love mashing them all together so I hope you've enjoyed this journey for the professional acrylic fluid art people out there try not to stress it's only paint <laughs> I will get better uh, but yeah so much fun and so relaxing I will see you on the next video remember thumbs up subscribe share comments are always welcome and remember to have a creative week. And if you've got any tips or tricks, remember to share in the community. Other than that, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.